Russia is facing problems in integrating foreign mercenaries from Africa into its army. According to Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko, reports show increasing difficulties and extremely low efficiency of Africans during combat operations. Judging by the reports from the places where the reinforcements are staying, the Russian army is in a really bad way with Africans. They don't want to fight. They don't want to work. Give us vodka, women and jumbo jumbo, he writes. Among the main problems, the experts note low level of knowledge of the Russian language, unwillingness to study the language in more depth and understand orders, lack of understanding the differences in ranks and seniority in the unit, unwillingness to carry out tasks as part of assault groups, extremely dissolute and relaxed behavior within units, low level of learning ability and efficiency, the performance of physical work on setting up positions is of poor quality. Kovalenko points out that these factors significantly complicate the effective use of foreign volunteers in the combat operations. The expert also expresses the opinion that the involvement of foreigners may be a sign of a shortage of human resources in the Russian armed forces. The Yakuts are finished. The Africans have failed. What's next? Will the Pyongyang people save the bald moth? What a disgrace. In the USSR era, all this rabble was pulled by 15 republics, and now the secular rabble is pulled by Putin's obscurantism. Russians, you are really at a dead end, the expert emphasizes. Recall several thousand Africans have been integrated into Russian battalions since the invasion of Ukraine. At present, Moscow is a potent player in Africa. Western awe for Russian operations reached its sad climax in the period from 2021 to 2023 as Moscow played a series of highly effective diplomatic and disinformation campaigns. Although not the primary cause, they certainly had a role in the ousting of the presidents of first Mali, then Burkina Faso, and finally Niger, the rise of three Moscow-friendly putschists regimes, and the upending of a failing decade-old French-led counter-terror campaign in the region. Moscow returned to the stage with a bang. The Kremlin perfectly read and then perfectly exploited the anger among the rank and file in the Sahelian armies who felt they were being humiliated and fed into the meat grinder while Europeans sat pretty in armored vehicles, their elites dining out on development aid. The Russian invading troops are exhausted and exhausted by constant meat assaults. The president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, is actively trying to find additional life force, but everything is not so simple. The Russian army is facing significant losses and a lack of human resources due to the long war against Ukraine. Newsweek editors draw attention to the fact that during the two-and-a-half-year war against Ukraine, the aggressor country of the Russian Federation lost more than 665,000 of its soldiers. What is important to understand is that more than a thousand Russian occupiers die or are injured every day. Despite this, official Moscow has never acknowledged its huge losses. Accurate data on casualties on the battlefield is difficult to verify. However, according to the British government, Russian losses are approaching 648,000. William Freer, a researcher at the British Center for Geostrategy, notes that both Russia and Ukraine face a shortage of human resources. According to him, after ammunition, the most important factor in war is the search for new manpower. It is also important to understand that it was in September 2024 that the aggressor countries suffered the greatest losses during the entire war. The Russian president is forced to actively look for new ways to replenish his occupation army despite the fact that right now his reputation is on the verge. Putin hopes to make voluntary military service more attractive while he does not reject unpopular options such as sending conscripts to Ukraine or announcing a new wave of mobilization. Russia uses several resources for military recruitment. These are regular conscripts, contract workers, reservists, as well as mercenaries, such as the fighters of the Wagner Group and foreigners who joined the war in exchange for high salaries and citizenship, Newsweek said. What is important to understand is that it is mobilization that is currently a controversial issue for Putin because a significant number of men of conscription age have left the country to avoid service. This did not prevent the Kremlin from introducing new rules allowing electronic subpoenas to be sent to Russians. However, the problem of lack of manpower is still relevant for the aggressor country. Ukrainian vampire drones equipped with infrared cameras have become the nightmare of Russians on the front lines. 
These drones are capable of operating effectively at night, hitting both stationary and moving targets. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication's analyst, David Axe, focuses on how a UAV from the Nemesis Group recently successfully hit a moving tank at night. The expert notes that at the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, most drones had only daylight cameras, making them ineffective at night. However, Ukraine has recently begun deploying UAVs equipped with infrared cameras, as showering Russian positions with dozens of grenades, blowing up their fortifications and vehicles, these drones wreaked havoc on Russian troops who are used to feeling safe at night. At first, the vampire drone raids were aimed primarily at stationary targets, but as Ukrainian UAV operators gained experience, they began to destroy targets as they moved. Our pilots demonstrated the highest level of skill, the Ukrainian military's drone branch boasted. The drone's third grenade missed, but it didn't matter. The damaged tank veered off the road. Its three crew clambered out from under the vehicle's punctured metal shell and scurried away. Mikhailo Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation, said the country's drones fundamentally changed the situation on the battlefield. Fedorov predicted the separate unmanned system forces would accelerate technological advancements. Night capability is one of the branch's priorities. Early in the wider war, most drones were strictly equipped with daylight cameras and were ineffective at night. Late last year, the Ukrainians began deploying so-called vampire drones fitted with infrared cameras, giving the soon-to-be independent military drone groups their first true nighttime capability. Analysts add that such drones attack the target from above, so artificial intelligence for targeting is less useful here. That is why the skill of the operator in controlling the vampire drone plays a decisive role. The vampire drones wreaked havoc on unprepared Russian troops who had come to equate darkness with protection. Dropping grenades by the dozen, the drones blew up parked vehicles and wrecked fortifications. The Russians called the night drones Baba Yagas, after a forest witch from Slavic folklore. A vampire drone might weigh up to 40 pounds and cost more than $10,000. Instead of flying into the targets like an inexpensive FPV does, a vampire drone bombs it from overhead.